This is mile marker zero off route US-1. It symbolizes the southernmost point in the continental US, but clearly the house behind it is further south. To me, the real reason to visit mile marker zero is to drive through the Florida Keys. From downtown Miami, it's an epic three-hour drive, starting with skyscrapers and ending in seven-mile-long bridges through the Caribbean, or the Gulf of Mexico depending on which car window you're looking out of. The final stop is Key West, and it's worth the trip. If you like coconut trees, flip-flops, and stiff drinks, you may find no better place. Of course, relaxation was the last thing on my mind when I agreed to pedal to Key West from my house in Fort Lauderdale. This is actually not bad right here. A little bungee around my stem. Brakes still work, shifters still feel okay. I'm pretty sure it was Alex's crazy idea and who could blame him? The poor guy has been off his mountain bike since November when he dislocated his shoulder. A road bike adventure through the flattest state in the nation would be a piece of cake. So we threw caution to the wind, did absolutely no research, and retrofitted our road bikes with racks and luggage. I guess the tent would be a nice thing to have. I mean, without the tent, A, mosquitoes. Yeah, the mosquitoes are bad. B, if it were to rain, that would make for a really not fun night. All right, so we need the tent. Alex had a lot of camping experience, and I went through a road biking phase a few years back. I was no stranger to high mileage. 200 miles in three days would be easy. So the goal for day one would be a campsite 90 miles away in Key Largo. As we set out from my house in high spirits, we had no idea how quickly we would be humbled. Alex and I fell short of Key Largo by over 40 miles on day one. Allow me to summarize why that was the case. Reason one, roadie miles and bikepacking miles are not the same. When you ride for training or for the sake of riding, you choose your favorite route. We were forced to ride through Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood, Hollandale, all of Miami, and Homestead, encountering ridiculous amounts of stoplights, traffic, glass, and general treachery. This sucks! We were moving at a snail's pace, which leads into reason number two. The worst route ever. Go! I used Google Maps to plan a route and tap the little bicycle icon. This is great for finding the closest bikeway, but terrible for finding directions. I think we gotta make a left. Rather than have you ride for a mile on a less than ideal road, Google would rather you get on a ferry. Oh. Our situation just got so much better. Sometimes it would want us to take a bikeway for a few miles, make a U-turn, and backtrack a mile to get on another bikeway. This instead of just hopping over one median. For the record, I now know the best route, but I can't go back in time to Wednesday afternoon. Which brings us to reason number three, a late start. We did some preparation in the morning and moseyed on down to the coffee shop. We didn't start pedaling until around 11 since we wanted to wait until rush hour was over. I don't know why it didn't click that we'd be in South Miami during the second rush hour. Since my calculations were based on roadie miles, I figured we'd be in the Keys by then. But I didn't account for all the stops, crap loads of extra weight, and reason number four, mechanical problems. For the record, I did one thing right, and that was to buy two really good brand new tires and a reasonably sturdy rack with panniers. Alexander's bike was straight f***ed. His tires were really old and his rack consisted of two backpacks and 14 bungee cords. The only thing on his bike that worked consistently was the horn. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> Alex kept getting flats on his rear tire, and it took forever to take the wheel on and off the bike due to the rear rack. Between stops to fix the rack, multiple flats, and a detour to restock our supplies, we burnt through two hours of daylight. Which brings me to reason number five. Bad luck. Which I admit is sort of a cop-out for bad planning. Google Maps led us to a really jagged and rough fire road, which was out of the question considering Alex's tire issues. So we tried to find a way around it and found ourselves trapped. Yeah, yeah. 
That's definitely not it. What's that? No way, no way. This road right here is too dangerous. I was going to do it, but Alex was actually the voice of reason. He might have saved both of our lives. During the day, maybe. At night, it was sketchy. We got to just find a place to crash for the night. So 40 miles from Key Largo, we decided to throw in the towel. Luckily, motels and homestead are about the same price as tent sites in the Keys. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to tell you about the Deluxe Inn Motel, is that the Yelp reviewers were not very generous with it. We were pretty bummed out and admittedly doubtful that we would get to Key West on time. Both of us were on a time constraint and our day two was looking grimmer and grimmer by the minute. All right, I'll go get us a room. Ah, uh, there it goes. Dude, this ain't bad. And this costs as much as the campsite. After 50 miles of arduous urban pedaling, we needed something to boost our spirits. Well-deserved meal. We've been eating cliff bars and f***ing birdseed all day. Our goal for the following day would be to make it to Key Largo and keep pushing all the way to Marathon by the end of the day. That was a lofty 80-mile goal for day two. Would we make it? Find out in the next video. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.